Hi and welcome to Plain and Simple Travels. I'm Vicky and here's Jim. See if you can work out which one's plain and which one's simple. Shouldn't do that long. I'll ignore that. You can follow us as we explore this great country. And if you enjoy watching, please hit like and subscribe. It costs nothing to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and we hope that you enjoy our latest episode. our latest trip we're heading to the south coast hoping to get as far as Naruma. Tonight we're hoping to get to Brankston in the Hunter Valley. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know where else we've maybe stopped. Maybe we'll stop at Bulladella. Oh maybe Bulladella. Yeah well we've tried to get in there before. But apparently it's what? Flooding down south now? Yeah flooding. Well it's raining everywhere. It's not raining here, but it was raining at home when we left. And Jim's got another gadget. <laughs> Before this trip, I had installed the MM 4x4 lockup kit. And I just sorted out some problems with it. It wasn't working properly for the first hour. As usual, I was getting cranky with it, but yeah, now, right. now it's locked on. As you can see, it's locked on in fifth gear. We're doing about 1,700 revs, just under 100 k's an hour. That should be good. The ultra gauge is working. You might have seen before. I also run an ultra gauge blue, or I used to run an ultra gauge blue, <laughs> but it was supposed to be compatible with the lock-up kit but obviously it's not or I've got to make some changes to it to make it compatible just waiting for a phone call back from the support from the lock-up kit people see what the problem is there not a big not a big drama the only problem is I don't know what the exhaust temperatures are running at so that's the only thing that concerns me but it's all all going good now since we pulled that out Out. Yeah. Anyway, we'll come back later and let you know where we spend the night. This is as far as we got day one. Bulla dealer. The free camp that used to be on the southern side of the river that's been closed for about 12 months. Oh, has it? Yeah, you didn't know I that. I wondered why we didn't go there. It's been closed <laughs> for about 12 months since COVID. So we came to the bowling club. Just uh, we've got an unpowered site, but there are powered sites. I think there's eight. All right. Three to eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many is that? Three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, six. <laughs> six so of each. Um, six of each. Unpowered is six dollars per person per night. If you want power, it's an extra six dollars. But we paid all that money for an inverter, so we don't want power. Now we're just going to take a walk into town. That's what used to be the free camp. Looks like if you try hard enough, it's still a free camp. Yeah. Oh, when I say free camp, there's a donation box somewhere. But it says on Wiki Camps that it's all locked up and you can't get in. But a few got in. This is what we woke up to on Thursday morning. It's rained fairly heavily on and off all night. And as you can see, the clouds are so low, the top of the mountains have even disappeared. There's plenty of rain around. Apparently it's flooding north and they're expecting flash flooding back home. Hopefully we will avoid it in this trip. First stop of the morning is a little town called Brankston. It's 
got a free camp there. Have a look at that. Hopefully we have a coffee. That's the main drag. Lots of signs about their heritage and stuff there. Looks like a proud little town. Tidy Towns 1994. <laughs> Find these replacing. Oh, oh goody. We got an op shot. Look at her go. She sees the sign, op shop, she's off. This is the Brankston RV pre campsite. There's room in there. It's still early in the day, so I can just imagine it'll get pretty, pretty full. She goes down past those two over there in the distance. Plenty of room. Toilets up here. Bump point. Yeah, good setup. Just turned onto the Putty Road. I've never driven this road before. Uh, another one to tick off the list. Even though we lived in Emu Plains at the bottom of the mountains for a few years, I've never been on this road. Yeah? No. Does this road go to the Blue Mountains? Actually. According to a lot of internet forums, quite a few people use the Putty Road to bypass the tollways around Sydney. Would I do it? No way. While watching this, you need to keep in mind that I'm towing a fully laden three and a half ton caravan behind me. And I'm also driving in sports mode and changing up and down as I need to. The only complication with the torque converter lock-up kit was there's a little bit of a time lag when you're changing back through the gears when it gets a bit steep. In some cases you've got to lift your foot off the accelerator for it to actually lock up once you slip back a gear. So we're currently climbing and swerving and slowing down and stopping. Much the same as the Dorigo mountain, but now with the lock-up kit is locked all the way up here, it's not searching for gears and every time I take my foot off the throttle it's not releasing the torque converter, it's staying locked all the way. So we're just getting a constant drive and no, no slack and no overheating in the transmission. Which is good, isn't it big? advantage of the lock-up kit is we've got engine braking coming downhill and it's standard form once you lift your foot, foot off the accelerator and the torque converter lets go so you don't have full engine braking with this I do the Vic's really impressed aren't you Vic? Just coming up to the Grey Gun Cafe. Which will most probably be a stop in the night. Now that we're on this side of the range, it's it sisterly yeah. range. Oh, 
Destination on the left in 200 meters. This is the overnight parking or overnight camping at Grey Gums. Looks like it'd be nice enough if it was dry, but after this morning's downpour, it's a bit wet and a bit boggy, so we're going to keep moving on. Probably going to Richmond. After leaving the Grey Gum Cafe yesterday, we moved on to Richmond. As usual, the GPS took us in a roundabout way, but it took us about an hour and a half to get here. And we came to the Richmond Wanderest, which is a car park attached to the Richmond Club. We're again unpowered, so it's five bucks a night. You gotta pay five dollars to join the club for a year. Um, it's nice enough. There is power and water if you want that. I think that was uh, $15 a night for power. There's boom gates to get in. There's two toilets and showers. Although they're pretty dirty. Haven't been cleaned for a while. But we're right in the centre of town. Shops are 200 metres away. Clubs 100 metres away. It's very quiet. It stopped raining for a little while, so we're going to have a bit of a look around. Mm. 